Hi, I'm Mike with Ucastic, sitting here at the Windy City Rails with Eric McCady, who runs the Chicago Java Users Group, and he's starting up the Chicago Ruby Testing Group. Uh, hi, Eric. Thanks hey. for uh, taking a moment to talk with me. Uh, so, going from Java to Ruby, that sounds like kind of a those communities are notoriously different. So, what's what's been your experience with between the two? Well, the a lot of the Java jobs here in Chicago tend to be with a lot of trading firms mm -hmm. and a lot of more established like insurance firms. And Ruby is, and there are some startups here that use it. I mean, I was with mm -hmm. a startup that used Java for a while. And there's a guy here, if you guys know, I think from Grubhub, yeah. like kind of a startup. And then, you know, Ruby is, so like I said, it, it, you know, Java is on one side of the, predominantly on one side of that continuum, and Ruby is a little more on the other side, like a lot of startups. Yeah. So you don't see too many startups using Java, but you, are, you see a few, but then you, you also see Ruby starting to get into established companies as yeah. well. And um, like I said, you know, <coughs> Java is really big in the finance space here in Chicago. Yeah. There's a, you know, a lot of trading firms. Uh, the Jug is hosted at CME, mm -hmm. mostly. Contact there. If, if he says there's no space available, I got to scramble. But um, yeah, he they, they they tend to do a lot of stuff. And if we get, especially if we get some like low level, like a guy from Oracle came and talked about like uh, memory garbage collection, and that yeah. that was packed. Yeah. When you say packed, what's packed? For well, us? we use Gathers Us. Yeah. For for RSVPs right now, and we have a limit of fifty since we're free, and so usually we we hit we hit that limit. You had to wait list it. <clears throat> and then yeah, and one time we also had to start another event, and then CME also does it internally, and so we get like maybe fifty, sixty people. When I started running CJUG, we were meeting up in Loyola, um, you know, near near John Hancock, mm -hmm. and we were getting like, in addition to the speaker, like maybe two or three people. Yeah. And then I moved, and I'm, you know, I'm funny, they say, like, in real estate location is the most important thing. Right. That's true for user groups, because we went to Th ThoughtWorks for a while. <clears throat> we had a few more people, and then I moved it to CME, which a lot of people like, because, you know, you got a lot of people work in the loop, and they live out in the suburbs, and so C yeah. CME is, like, right in between there. Okay. And so it's, you know, a lot of people have said they love it. We did release a survey on SurveyMonkey. Only 12 people responded. <clears throat> and there were a few people who said they didn't like CME, but... They, didn't they have keep any. coming. Well, it must not have been the same people that like it. I mean, most people like it, but like I said, I mean, location is definitely an important thing. Mm -hmm. And I talked to someone in uh, Sears Tower, um, and I was kind of like, I don't think I want, you know, people don't want to get patted down right. just for a lecture. I mean, CME is, like I said, I mean, <clears throat> Josh Bennett's my contact, and he's really been great and really helped us out a lot. Okay, great. And so, you, what is what is driven you to want to go towards creating this Ruby testing group? I mean, because there's there's a lot of testing and coolness going on inside of Java uh, with Makito and some really neat stuff going on in there. But well, what, what, I personally am getting more into Ruby. Yeah. Um, I mean, honestly, I'm running the Java group now because honestly, I think if if I were to just drop it, <coughs> it would die. So yeah. I'm trying to find someone to replace it. And there, there, you know, there does seem to be demand for a Java group here in Chicago. It is a little frustrating because nobody ever wants to run it, right. as you know, yeah. running a group. But you know, we, like I said, we have we've had meetings where we've had quite a few people show up. So like I said, there's definitely demand for a Java group in Chicago. Um, and I just been going more to the <coughs> excuse me to the Ruby groups. And um, yeah, I was at Bank of America for a while, and I got laid off. And like everybody I knew was at the bank. I had right. like no. Technology social network. I like rebuild it from scratch, and so I started going to some. I just went to a Ruby meeting, and then things eventually kind of rolled on from there. And so, like I said, I'm getting into the Ruby world. And as far as starting a Ruby testing group, you know, I also went through Code Academy, mm -hmm. and you know, everyone talks about how you know you should always write your tests first for all your code for your yeah. applications, but nobody really spends much time talking about testing. You go to the different user, you know, the different meetings. Like the last one was about Ruby Motion. Yeah. How often do you have a meeting about RSpec or something? Right. You know, and we were kind of, and I'm so running it with, ano with another, with another, with another Code Academy alumni, Alfonso Rush. <clears throat> we're kind of retooling it right now, but mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> kind of a little. We want to start it back up again, but we just kind of thought, you know, like everyone talks about, you should code test first. You know, maybe you should do languages test framework first. 
Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> Learn you know, the language via the, the testing. Program. I don't know if that's really practical, but that, that's kind of a thought that occurred to us. Because, like, in, you know, in Code Academy, you get people like like Afonso and I who had been to other languages and are using to kind of transition to Rails, and then you also have people who are like, well, now it's Starter League. Yeah. And then you have people who know, know nothing about coding, and um, but they don't really cover testing very much. Of course, all the employers want testing, so we're trying to you know like build like a little curriculum to kind of lead people through our specs, since that's kind mm -hmm. of the main. Definitely seems to predominate more than test units. Right. And we're hosted right now at a company called Open Software Integrators, which is primarily a Java shop, ironically enough, because right. one of their founders is a guy named Andrew Oliver. He was down in uh, North Carolina. He wrote a, the, the POI framework, which is a Java framework that lets Java developers read and write office files. And they open office here in Chicago, and I just met the guy who runs the Chicago office. His name is Patrick French, and he really wants to help build the community as well, and so he's they're hosting it. <coughs> and... Um, so yeah, we're we're, we're kind of you know of course this testing can have a lot of religion, mm -hmm. you know there's people like like DHH like half the time he's tweeting about how much he hates RSpec right right, right. Um, we're going with RSpec because it's it's definitely more predominant <coughs> and you know like I said coming together with like a curriculum and we're trying to even like maybe get some people in in local people you know I know someone at Backstop who said he'd be willing to come mm -hmm. talk about um, mocking you know kind of like give little lectures about their their experiences and the guys who started gathers us um, a couple of them were at Optiva and then it became Groupon and one right. of them blogged right. that they started because not only did they want something that, that did RSVPs but they also wanted to get experience with Capybara mm -hmm. and so we we'll have them come in and maybe and maybe talk and so we're trying right. to get like some we want it to be like maybe a six week course um, so you're thinking more or less uh just a formal user group, but more of a study learn group. And kind of a, the yeah, that, 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 that's kind of, because like nobody really, <clears throat> there don't seem to be too many um, tutorial groups, in a sense. I mean, it's, it's usually like, kind of like, come on, this, this, you know, we're on the third Tuesday of the month, and we're going to talk about this, and then we're all going to disperse for another month. And so yeah. if you do like more of a tutorial, it's like if somebody misses a month, a week, they're kind of behind, and then we also thought about looking at the RSpec book. And then one of the things about the RSpec book is, of course, if you if you've looked at it, the first section is all about cucumber practice. Right. It's like why is it called the RSpec book? Um, of course, David Chilimski is here. Maybe he can answer that question. So we're kind of retooling things, and you know. Um, if, but if I, if you don't mind, I'm going to jump back okay. to what you said earlier about uh, the show, the the networking aspect yeah. of it. That you were working in a company, and you had so much invested in those people and that those relationships at the company that once that's went away you're like oh I have no network yeah. and where it's user groups and conferences you get to meet people and talk to people and build up that kind of yeah. kind of network I mean that's is, is that something that's looking back at uh, you know the Java group has been useful in the past that you knew people and it's, it's helped um, it's also kind of let me you know if you run a group, you kind of have what you call president's privilege in a yeah. sense that I can, I th I'm a kind of introverted guy. I feel I'm more comfortable walking up to a group leader and saying, hey, I run the job group, you know, like talking to you yeah, know, Ray Hightower. Yeah, you Hightowers. have something to talk about. You know, because I mean, like, the, the stereotype, and this is kind of true for me, is like a lot of developers are kind of introverted. It's like, because I would actually, and sometimes when I'm at the Java group, you know, I will kind of like introduce myself to people and thank you for coming. And then <clears throat> I was at another event, completely, you know, not related to technology, and I just kind of sitting off the corner by myself, like I should go up and talk to people. And I, and I, I stopped myself, I'm like that would seem really weird. Yeah. If some guy just, just introduces himself, yeah. like it's okay for me as the host of the of the leader of the job group. You know, so as far as networking, yeah, like I said, I mean, a lot of the other bank. I mean, I, I would be going to the job group for a while, but a lot of the people, the, I was like the only bank person there. Yeah. So, like I said, it was kind of almost like these two separate worlds in a way. But yeah, like I said, it was it was kind of hard rebuilding it from scratch and going to user groups really helps. And you know, like I said, that's kind of a cliche. Being involved in a user group helps. Um, you know, I mean, it's, 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 it's uh, running a user group. It's sometimes like living paycheck to paycheck. Yes. It's like okay, I got something for next month. <laughs> yeah. And then yeah. and then like you know, two weeks your two weeks before the presentation, it's like I need someone. But one thing that's happened is you do it over time, you know, eventually people kind of start coming to you. Yeah, yeah, and that's, that's one of the problems that I've seen in user groups is that people, they start a user group and then after a few months, they realize it's kind of hard to get people to cooperate, to people to do what you need. Yeah. But once you've getting, gotten through that, that, um, that uh, initial trial period, 
you start to build up and then people start to recognize, oh, this group has been around in a little while. So sometimes powering through it, you know, those, those we, lean times. Is, yeah, the Java group, we kind of have the advantage. We only have to come up with actually 10 presentations a year because we meet the third Tuesday, so no one's going to come in December. Yeah. <laughs> and then October, we have, uh, there's the No Fluff Just Stuff, which is like, it's kind of like, there's a guy in Colorado, his name's Jay Zimmerman, and he basically, his company does, they put on like little mini Java ones around the mm-hmm. country. And what he does is he will send, excuse me, speakers to Java groups throughout the country and raffle off some t- a couple of tickets. Yeah. So October, he sends someone out to us. So that's yeah. one month we don't have to do anything. Right. And um, <clears throat> so we just had to come, <clears throat> excuse me, it's for like 10. And I'm sure the Ruby group probably doesn't meet in January because they're the first Tuesday and it's so close to the new year. Yeah. So I would say if you start a user group, try to be at the end of the month <laughs> or the beginning of the month because yeah. it's actually a little less work that way. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I personally, I run right in smack dab in the middle of the month, so I, I guess I haven't And that. I've noticed people love to do things on Tuesdays. Yeah, yeah Tuesdays is reason, even, if, even if I do things like non-tech related, like I kind of thought about look, going to, like looking into like going to some Buddhist meditation groups and they're like, Tuesday, Tuesday. Everybody does everything on Tuesday. <laughs> I don't know what it is about Tuesday. Yeah, yeah so I, I hadn't thought about it, but the uh, my group has been most successful on Tuesdays as well. So yeah. No. Well, anyway, thank you very much, right. Eric, for taking the time to talk with me.